So I really love that song. I listen to it often because he is a good, good father. And indeed, he cares for you. And he has everything in his heart towards you, your concerns. He has them on his heart and he is working through those things. So great song. We're going to affirm our faith and we're going to use the words that you'll see coming up on the screen now. Love you to join with me as we say this together. King Jesus, King Jesus, come and reign over my life. Reign over my heart and my emotions. Reign over my mind, my thinking and my beliefs. Reign over my will and all my decisions. Reign over my family and all my relationships. Reign over my work and my service for you. Reign over my money, my possessions and my time. King Jesus, come and reign over me. Amen. As you know, over the past number of weeks, we've been having interviews with members of our church family who have been working through the pandemic in different situations. And this week, we're going to have the interview with Alison. Richard's going to lead that and conduct that. And I'm going to hand over to Richard and Alison now. Hi, St. Paul's. So I'm delighted for this week's interview uh, that Alison has agreed to join us. Hi, Alison. Hi, Richard. So thank you so much for joining. I, I think everybody in St. Paul's probably knows what you do, but just in case there's, a, there's one or two people out there that don't, maybe you could just uh, uh, share with us uh, what is exactly your job at the minute. Okay, so um, I'm principal in Jonah Primary School, which is one of the schools within our, our church community as well. Um, I've been in the school since 1993, um, but I've been principal since 2008. Um, so it's, it's a lovely place to work. Um, what is lovely now is that many of our congregation, I actually taught, um, and now I'm seeing their children come through school as well. So you know all the secrets, all the embarrassing secrets, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Weekend diaries are great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously we, we hear a lot in the news about, about schools and so on. Um, uh, so maybe you could just, I suppose, put, put us in your shoes. What, what's, what's it really like for you and your colleagues uh, with, what's, with everything that's going on for now? Okay, so um, I love my job and working in a school is a real privilege. And, you know, the children are very much at the heart of everything that we do there, the focus of all that we do. So before COVID, um, in my role, I would have been in and out of classes, chatting with the children, seeing how they were getting on with their work, all those kinds of things, making sure they reached their full potential. And it would have been very much a hands-on kind of experience. We would very much have an open door policy in Dona. We, we love the parents to come in and see how the kids are doing. And we kind of promote that family ethos. Um, pastorally, we would value that very, very highly. And um, we believe if the child's happy in school, the rest falls into place. But suddenly in March of last year, that literally changed overnight for us. Um, we discovered that within two days, school would be closed and children were going to remote learning. Um, and this has put tremendous pressure on parents, children, staff, the whole school community. Um, and we don't underestimate just how difficult that is for folk. Um, it was a huge change for our staff team as well um, to go from being hands-on with children to being far away at the end of a computer is, is just so challenging and school felt so empty without the children um, you know when the children left that day on the 20th of, of March we naively thought they might be back before the end of the school year um, and it was really emotional waving the children off that day not knowing what the days ahead would bring so from from my role you know it changed instantly because it suddenly became about procedures and protocols the momentum of change of change was just immense and continually building. It became about paperwork, risk assessments, policies, all of which were essential, but all of which are not really about what the children are about. Um, each day the goalposts moved. Um, suddenly we became accessible 24-7 basically, emails bombarding um, from the department, from the education authority, and you're constantly anxious in case you miss something that's you know really really important um staff would have had queries parents would have had queries and you know the answers weren't always there from my point of view as a principal um sometimes you heard things on the news rather than hearing them through the proper channels and that's really frustrating because 
then you're reacting to things just on the hoof as such. Um, so that puts a new pressure on, on your role as well. Um, obviously from August, the children were back in school and that was just amazing. Um, the children have been inspirational for us. Um, we watched our P1 and nursery children coming in, being so brave, no mummy, no daddy with them um, and putting their trust in us and just being an absolute encouragement to us as a staff team. The rest of the school, the children have followed all the procedures. Um, they've kept safe. They've been incredibly resilient, incredibly adaptable. Um, and just even to hear laughter back in school again has been amazing. Um, the children obviously worked in bubbles. Um, and as a school community, we've been very blessed because we've had no positive tests of COVID with either a pupil or a staff member. Um, so really, we are really thankful for that. Um, but Christmas then came along and things changed again. The children are back learning remotely. Um, the staff are all in school. We are there with key worker children and with vulnerable children. But our school building feels like an empty shell again. It, it, it misses that heartbeat of the children being there. Um, you know, with social distancing and so on, you miss the camaraderie. Um, we can't have staff meetings with more than six people and Zoom has become a way of life for all of us. So school life is very, very different. Um, and we just are yearning to get back to some kind of normality for everyone's sake. Uh, I'm sure. And so it's dealing with a lot of the unknowns. And as you say, you're hearing things often at the same time as as the parents in the, in the community. I mean, have, have there been any, I suppose, particularly challenging uh, aspects of this or, or things that have happened um, through this time? Yeah, there, there are a number of things. I mean, the last year, for example, our P7 children left in March and we haven't seen them since. And P7 should be such a joyful time. It should be such a time of fun. And the kids missed out on all that. And Richard, as a dad, you would appreciate that yourself, just how, how heartbreaking that was for children. Um, this year's P7s, oh my goodness, they have been on such a roller coaster with AQE. Um, first of all, the tests were delayed, then they were off then they were back on again, then they're off again, you know, and those children are not with us to be reassured, um, you know, for us to say to them, look, you've, you've worked so hard. Um, and that's really challenging for us as a staff because we want to be there for the kids and we can only reach out to them through a computer, basically. Um, there've been challenges for all of us, you know, staff, children, parents, there, there's real fear out there, um, fear of COVID, fear of maybe people taking things home to their families and the children have needed um, a huge amount of reassurance um, in school. Um, I suppose another challenge for us, we would very much promote that open door policy, but the door has remained closed all year because we're trying so hard to keep our, our school community safe. So the challenge is to maintain our school ethos, but keep our children safe because that has to be our priority. Um, challenges for the younger children, you know, people talk about, oh, get the children to keep a two metre um, social distance. A young child doesn't know what a metre looks like, never mind keeping their distance. And, you know, if a child falls or needs help, you know, how could you possibly not do it? So social distancing becomes impossible. So every time a staff member helps a child, they're actually putting themselves at risk as well. Um, I suppose from my point of view, it's been the relentless nature of it has been the challenge. Um, through Even through the summer holidays, you're continually responding to things. Everything's changing, everything's in a state of flux. Um, and anyone who knows me knows I'm a wee bit of a control freak. Um, so to be having things completely out of my control doesn't sit well with me. Um, but you have to sort of just try to make the best decisions. Um, but in spite of all that, I work with an amazing team of people. Um, they are second to none and they are of great support to me in my role as well. The children have been so happy to be back in school that all those challenges become unimportant because you begin to focus again on what school is about and, and why you're there and why you do the job you do. Wow. I'd love to know um, how your faith has supported you, kept you going, kept you even seeing through through a lot of this? So I suppose throughout this, I would have been lost without my faith. And, 
you know, at different times, Bible verses would come into my head, um, maybe verses I, I was taught or learned as a child, um, and maybe just the right verse with the right message at the right time comes back to me, even um, lyrics of songs that just, you know, reinforce a message of encouragement in challenging times. And I suppose for me as well, you know, having a faith is all about having a hope. And I suppose the hope is that this will pass and there are better days ahead and that undoubtedly God is in control. Um, and he's working through people even now, even, you know, things like the vaccine, um, an absolute answer to prayer. And I suppose thinking of prayer, prayer is very, very important to me. And every day I pray for our school, I pray for our school community, and I know many people are doing the same. Um, and God has been good to us. And even when we have felt like the virus is closing in around us with neighbouring schools and so on, we've kept safe through that. Um, so at times it feels like we're surrounded, but we're like a wee haven of safety. Um, being able to uh, you know, attend online services, Bible studies, prayer meetings has been really, really helpful to me. And it sounds a bit crazy, but it's really encouraging to see other people checking in as well. Um, because although you're not seeing that person, you know you've got a sense of fellowship there because you can see, for example, Richard's watching with you and it's actually very reassuring to know that there are other people there feeling the same way as you do and doing exactly what you do. So it's like almost like remote fellowship. Um, so when church reopened, we did, we did return to church and that was amazing because there's no place like your church to feel that presence of God. Um, and I suppose, you know, now we look forward to a time when it, it can reopen, but um in normal times, my faith gives me my purpose anyway. But in these times, I suppose it's all the more important. Um, and I've been so encouraged by so many other people and ultimately believe that God will bring us out of this chaos. That's so encouraging uh, to hear you say that. So so maybe finally, uh, you know, how, how can your St. Paul's family pray for you your, your uh, and your school community? So I know um, that so many folk in St Paul's have been praying for our school community and, you know, myself and the staff, we really, really appreciate that. So I would ask you to continue to do that um, and to pray for strength, for resilience for the staff, um, to think of all our pupils, you know, and, you know, they're all at home. We don't quite know what they're up to um, other than what we see online and to remember our B7s because they're just feeling overwhelmed at the moment and, you uh, it's they're, they're so young they're 10 they're 11 and our hearts are breaking for them because they just don't know what the future brings so remember them as well um and i suppose in that as well um it's important that we would give thanks as well that as a school community we've made it this far and just pray that that continues for the days to come we, we will do that and thank you so much thank you. For, for sharing and, uh, and and spending time with us today Alison. thank you thank you richard